you know, part of give back, there, there's a lot that goes into that. Part of give back is to pray. And if you can't pray, if you're not going to obey. And I pray. And every day I, I tell God that it's his will be done, not mine. Do with me what you will. And one of the things is to give, to serve. And I am a backstage kind of guy. But he says, no, get up front, stand at the podium. So I obey. And I pray. I put this stuff together. It didn't sound so good in my head. And I just got it down and then start heading this way. And before I know it, it's just googly goop. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, how's this going to be? But give it up to him. Do not be anxious for nothing. He'll take care of it. Yeah, that's right. So, and that's how that, that's exactly what he does. So, step 12. This is. CR on the hill. By the way, if you don't know me, I am a Christ follower. My name is Doug, and I am recovering from alcoholic or alcohol. Right. It'll be three years next month. And those chips, those chips, love those chips. Mm -hmm. And after you get past that first year, it's like, man, I got 12 months to get another. <laughs> does get faster and faster, especially when you really start trying to step out and help and to help others. So Dennis and, and Dave, they took community recovery on the hill and they changed the step wording a little bit. I'm going to read CR on the hill and it's, uh, I will share a message of hope with anyone that will listen. And First Peter 3.15, we just read this. But in your heart, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. And in a few minutes, I'm gonna go through the uh, Celebrate Recovery Workbook, which are the is what we use. And we'll, we'll go over that step when we, when we get into that. But, uh, so, Celebrate Recovery, and I do all celebrate recovery. It was something I did in recovery and I just fell in love with mainly because Jesus is who we name as our higher power and that's what I, I read the blue book. I, I got no problem with that either but I just want to be able to stand in front of people who think like me and will say it is Jesus Christ that does it for you. So Keith mentioned this being a journey of light on this side and CR kind of describes it that way too as a journey when you start your step program and so we've been on a journey to get to this step 12 and we started with the surrendering journey in the first few steps when we finally realized what a mess we were and we couldn't do it on our own there was somebody that could help us and we gave it up to him and then we had an inward journey which we really looked at ourselves just to kind of figure out what the mess was and where it was coming from and why. We went into an outward journey where we took what we learned about ourselves and decided to start doing something about it, start to make amends. And then we have an upward journey where we really start to reach out and, and it's the spiritual part of our journey where finally we get the journey upward where it's, it's a spiritual awakening. It's when Jesus Christ comes awake inside of you. He is there now. And now that he's there and awake, you start to really understand. We really understand what Jesus did for us so that we could spend eternity with him. And so to use the word to give or to serve kind of sounds like work when honestly it's a privilege mm -hmm. it is a privilege for us to be able to help somebody else understand what God has done for us and and to see that and have that spiritual awakening themselves and and want to help somebody else and it just goes on and on it's a pay it forward type thing so we talked about getting here and you know are we done do we need to keep going to meetings we're at yeah. step 12 now can't can't we just keep 
helping and reaching out and doing things without going to meetings. But I, I say no. For, for one, if, if you're really giving and you really want to help, there's nowhere better than to be at a place where people that are coming in the door are hurting and they are looking for that help. They're looking for somebody. It's fish in a barrel. <laughs> it, so it, it makes it easier to, to find somebody. Sorry, it's really y'all are fish. <laughs> I was one. So. But, I mean, it just this is this is one of the best places to be. This uh, prison ministry, uh, people just hurting, and that that's what they're looking for. Is it? It's a lot easier than working someplace where everybody acts like they got it together and they don't want to don't want to know and you got to try to figure it out and try to work at it and right here they're they're here and they're most people are willing to let let you know what it is what they need or what they feel and the, the feeling of helping somebody to understand not only how to help themselves and to get better, but that Christ is the reason. And they find Christ and they're baptized and they become a Christ follower. There's nothing better. And I know there's a couple in this room that when they first started coming, they weren't sure. They weren't sure about God or Jesus. But it goes to the giving the answer for the hope that we had when they start to see that and they understand that, they see it, and they, they start to come around. Works out really well. So I'm gonna go over the Celebrate Recovery now. And for the give, for step 12, principle eight is yield myself to God to be used to bring the good news to others, both by my example and by my words. Happy are those who are persecuted because they do what God requires. And I remember a time in my life where I always knew God, just always kept him at an arm's length. And and I'd be around people having conversations that that weren't godly, kind of make you uncomfortable, but never speak up, never say anything. Just let it ride. Didn't want to be persecuted. Didn't want to hear it. Now it's like whatever. <laughs> And I've had people tell me that. I had somebody ask me one day, uh, how's your day? And I just said, it's great. You know, Jesus Christ died on the cross for the forgiveness of my sins. And that, it went on for a minute. And then they were like, well, I never would have asked you if I... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just different. And, and you get to that point where you're, you're, you're glad to share it. Well, step 12 for community or uh, celebrate recovery is having had a spiritual experience as a result of these steps we try to carry this message to others and practice these pr principles in all our affairs in all of our affairs that doesn't mean just when you're at work just when you're around somebody just at church this means when you're in the car by yourself this mm. means when you get home you don't kick the dog. You're not screaming at your wife. You're not fussing about your children. It means all of your affairs. And now we all struggle with that. It's hard. But when you reach the point of giving and spiritual awakeness, and Christ is awake inside of you, you're going to let it slip. You're going to let it fly. You're also going to catch yourself. And you're going to back up. And you're going to immediately say, I'm sorry. And you're going to go about it different. So when you're driving down the road and Dean cuts you off because he's in a hurry <laughs> to get to McDonald's, well, just yes, we'll leave it down. give him some grace. <laughs> Back off. Don't ride his bike. Yeah. Wave at him. You know, we've all done it. I pulled out in front of people. I don't want that guy cussing me. So just need to give some grace and let it go. So that, that's all of our affairs. So with, and I've done this before, left letters out, we've talked about that before too, but 
they use acrostics in almost every one of their lessons. And with give, the acrostic is give. So the G in give is God first. By placing God first in your life, you will realize that everything you have is a gift from him. You realize that your recovery is not dependent on material things. It's built upon your faith and your desire to follow Jesus Christ's direction. And that's what I was talking about. You realize that it is a gift from him. So to do this for him is a privilege. You're happy to do so. I, but it becomes we. So mm -hmm. they just use I to give, but it becomes we. Step 12, the 12 steps do not begin with the word I. The first word in step one is we. The road to recovery is not meant to be traveled alone. And we talked about too, do you need to keep coming to meetings? Well, what, is, what do they say? Meeting, making people. Make it. Make it, that's right. So we're, we're not supposed to do this alone. Two are better off than one because together they can work more effectively. If one of them falls down, the other can help him up. But if someone is alone, there is no one there to help him. Two men can resist an attack that would defeat one man alone. And when you've got somebody to lean on, when, when you're struggling, even, even when Christ is awake inside of you, you need people that have that same thing so that they can help you defeat the devil because that's who's coming at you. So we, V is for victory shared. God never wastes a hurt. Principle eight gives us the opportunity to share our experience and victories. This is how it was for me. This is what happened to me. This is how I gained the strength. There's hope for you. So victory shared. Part of the victory shared is us sharing our stories, our testimonies. Uh, next to scripture, your story is the strongest weapon you have. So share your stories. That's part of it. Share your stories with your coworkers, with the guy at Home Depot, with any opportunity you have to share your story, share it. You'd be surprised at how many people, you might think they weren't even listening. And then two months later, somebody's pulling you aside saying, my brother has an alcohol problem. What can I do? Or I have this problem. What can I do? <clears throat> just, just share. It, it goes a long way. You know, it'll, it'll really surprise you. I think. Uh, oh, and it's not, everything's not a victory. I can say that. I've had six, seven, eight people in the last year probably reach out to me. A couple, I've been able to help. I know uh, one person that has passed because of their addiction. Uh, Troy and I have a friend right now that's laying in the hospital. They've given him three months. Mm -hmm. And he's somebody that reached out to me a year ago on my anniversary and tried to help. Got him to Isaiah House, but he didn't stay, came back. It's one of those things you, you, you're you giving and you're, you're obeying God, you're praying, you're listening, you're doing what he's telling you to do. But you also got to understand that person doesn't want to do it. There's really not much else you can do about it. You just got to keep praying. You got to hope God takes a hold of the situation and does something with it. And you, you got to let that go or eat you up inside. So it, it can be hard. But, but knowing God's there with you, you'll make it through it. E is an example of your actions. In James 1.22, it says, We are to be doers of the word, but to be of help up to another, we are to carry the message in all our affairs. You have all heard the term Sunday Christians. Let us not become just Friday night recovery buffs for our sake Wednesday night. But yeah, so, so take it out there. Carry it with you every single day. So they also go into... Another acrostic that's yes. And why is this is based on the principle eight about yielding yourself to God. So why is yield myself to God? Principle eight sums it up the why. Yield myself to God to be used to bring this good news to others, both by my example and by my words. And we talked a little bit about that. If 
a Christian is to overcome by some sin, humbly help him back onto the right path, remembering that the next time it might be one of you who is in the wrong. Share each other's troubles and problems, and so obey our Lord's command. Galatians 6. He is example is what is important. Your walk needs to match your talk because your lifestyle reflects what you believe. Does your lifestyle show others the patterns of the world's selfishness, pride, and lust? Or does it reflect the love, humility, and service of Jesus Christ? So walk the walk, talk the talk, share your story. Like I said, that's about as strong as the next strongest weapon you have next to Scripture. So, And I've been doing this, like I said, I've been doing this at work. Uh, anywhere but everybody at work knows my story everybody and they decided they wanted to start doing I work for a company that is Methodist based so it's a, it's a religious organization and they wanted to start doing weekly prayers with the entire staff and in our residents in the hallways and they came and asked me lead those prayers wow. so wow. so I do that every week we pick a morning and, and, and we do that and another one of those things where I'm like I, but I said do it and it, it works I just just go out there and pray I go out there and it just it blows it just, it just works so and and we we, we uh, house individuals with intellectual disabilities and if you want to feel God's presence somewhere, that'll do it because they are open to everything. There is no resistance, no resistance to the Holy Ghost. He will be there in the hallways when you're praying. And some of the people that are not so religious or spiritual staff wise, have really started to open up to that and come around too. And, and you can see it in their interactions, especially on the prayer day. You can see people just getting along so much better for the day. It just starts the day off right. Just talking to God and letting him take things for you for the day. And then the S is serve others as Jesus did. When you have reached principle eight, you are ready to pick up the Lord's towel, the one with which he washed the disciples' feet in the upper room. Remember that? And that's back to, again, knowing what he did for you, having him awake inside of you, just just makes this a privilege. So some, how are some of the ways that you can do this? How, how can you say yes? How can you give back? Um, so... For one, in, in this group, you could be an accountability partner, be a mentor. Uh, everybody, we're pretty good about everybody getting everybody's numbers. And that's the thing we always say, those numbers do you no good if you don't use them. So call somebody and hopefully that person that's getting that phone call is ready to be an accountability partner or, or be a mentor. Step up and say you want to be a mentor. Help somebody work the steps. That's that's a real privilege to help somebody do that. To help them keep them guided. Help them keep them on the path. Help them work at the right pace. Not too fast. Slow them down when they need to be slowed down. Call them out when they need to be called out. Being a mentor is an awesome thing. Um, be involved in this celebrate recovery, but also be involved in the church. Uh, if you're not comfortable and you're still working on stepping out and giving and, and giving back, start off small. Talk to if you're a member of this church, talk to Pastor Dave. Uh, something as simple as a door greeter. You know, you come to church on a Sunday, you're looking for a new place, and you're walking up to the door, and it's all smiles and welcome in. And, get you some coffee, they'll talk if you want to stand and talk. That goes a long way. So if you get into church, that pastor's sermon is not so great, and you leave thinking, man, sermon wasn't that great. But man, the people at the door, the welcoming at the door, 
work, work on the back. We'll give it another try. It goes a long way. I was, I was, oh. <laughs> I, I was here this past Sunday, by the way, and it, it was awesome, like it always oh, is. Took you like three or four times. Time. Took you, yeah, yeah. See, but you kept coming hey, back because the well. people at the door, right? Yeah, people at the door. And Jason's, the coffee. Jason's preaching this week, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, just come back. start there. <laughs> So that's a small thing, but it goes a long way. Mm -hmm. I heard a story once about a uh, a youth minister who was doing his weekly youth ministry in church and had a 12, I think he was 12 years old or so, had come a couple of weeks, was real quiet, real offish, stayed to himself. And he said the Lord was tugging at him to to try to speak to the child, try to sit with the child, try to do anything, but he didn't do it. He ignored, he didn't obey. And after a couple of weeks, the, quit, the kid quit coming again. That child turned out to be Marilyn Manson. And Marilyn Manson despises Christians and thinks they're hypocrites. And this ate on that guy because, you know, what if he had obeyed and just spoke to the child a couple of weeks and got him really involved in church, maybe. But you know, that's just, that's an example. And that's an example of every day in our affairs and walking through Home and Depot and you see somebody, you make eye contact, smile, say hi, good morning, how are you doing? You're standing in line to check out, talk to the people behind you or in front of you. Just speak to people, be kind to people goes a long way. I saw this this morning. I've got a sobriety app on my phone that gives me a little something every morning to read along with my Bible reading and stuff that pops up and then it reminds me in the evening to do my nightly journal. I don't write it down but I do do in my head every night. I said do do. <laughs> but it said this, this morning it said a word of encouragement during failure is worth more than an hour of praise after success and a simple word of encouragement can make somebody's day and that's giving that's, that's serving that's discipleship for the Lord uh, some other ways to share to help bring people to Christ uh, in Acts 1.8 Ye shall be witnesses unto me. And we talk about prayer. Create a prayer list. Uh, put yourself on a prayer list. Every morning when you're praying for people that you know are in the madness or you know has a health condition or whatever the prayer is or what it's for, just pray for yourself. Lord, what will you have me do today? What do you need me to do today? What can I do for you today? Whatever, but put yourself on that list. It'll help. This is one I struggle with, and that's commit strip scriptures to memory. That helps when people ask you for an answer to the reason for the hope you had, is to be able to tell them where to go find that in the Bible. I can tell you I read it in there. I struggle sometimes with where I read it. But it's something I need to work on personally. Uh, we talked about share your story with anyone who will listen. It's an, it really is one of the next most powerful things you have next to the scripture. Uh, demonstrate your love of Christ, like we talked about. Smile, talk, be kind to others, be selfless. Uh, let people go in front of you uh, at line. Uh, maybe buy somebody breakfast. Uh, just anything like that. It, you'd really probably be surprised. You, you won't know because you've done it, you've gone on. But there is a pay it forward thing. People do see that and they do they do pay it forward. Uh, bring people to church, invite them. And you'd be surprised when somebody will say, Yeah, I'll go. You know, there's all kinds of special stuff at times, and a lot of times that's a good way to get people. <coughs> hey, we're doing this this Sunday or or whatever, get them started. And and bring them to a good welcoming church like this. That makes all the difference in the world. Uh, we talked about prayers at work. Try that if you work somewhere that's open to it. See about having prayers. 
I might start off with just a couple of you, but before you know it, it'll be eight or 10 or 12 of you. You know, you'll end up with a whole, whole group, a whole bunch of you going. Uh, begin, just begin, start somewhere, whatever it is, just, just begin. And like I said, prayer and obey and be ready to be uncomfortable because he will ask you to do some uncomfortable things but when you do it the reward is so worth it so just be ready to be uncomfortable so what time is it okay so so do that so we we worked all these steps we've been preparing for this we're spiritually awakened god has us ready now we are ready if you're step 12. now some some may be not there yet you're still working on you and when you start this process you think the goal is whatever your addiction is or whatever your sin is whatever your it is but that's not the ultimate goal the ultimate goal it's to reach the giving and the serving, to be a disciple for God. That's the ultimate goal. And you'll see that once you get through your end. So keep working on that. But God has us ready. So now it is time to go. There's no armor to put on because God has already armed you. You are ready to go. <coughs> so finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the authorities against the power of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms that's what we're ready for that's all I've got tonight so thank you all very much <laughs> Jim, Jim Oates who was here just a few yeah. weeks ago he's his books are awesome yeah. and in the and in this book here the a few essential disciplines of the Christ follower that there's a whole chapter back in there about serving and, and things to do and, and a couple I actually wanted to touch on a couple of that and in this part of your life where you're giving and you're wanting to help so many don't forget about your family your family needs to be served too so keep your family in mind love your family do the things you need to do for your family serve them too your children when they call and need something don't put them off take care of them too your neighbors your great good neighbors that you never have any trouble with don't forget them <coughs> Reach out to them, talk to them, be with them. Mow their lawn. Dennis Hampton got a shout out in the book for mowing yards. <laughs> Do what? No, you're in the book. Trust me. So that that was a couple things, but there's there's a lot of good stuff in here. But the serving thing, and the, the one thing I wanted to point out was don't forget your family. Uh, and your neighbors in the community. Of course, we talk about the church and all of that. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just really quickly wanted to say a couple of things. Uh, first of all, uh, Doug mentioned the intro of a friend uh, in the hospital struggling, and that's, I think I know who you're talking about after the rest of what you said. Uh, so, um, you know, those are real people. Uh, real people uh, in this community and in Taylorsville between here and Taylorsville uh, we lost three this week um, to some form of addiction um, and uh, two of which I knew pretty well and uh, and so you know this the, the struggle is real it's out there it's out there all the time. Um, breakfast this morning with 
Ken Dion, and uh, he mentioned to me that it was something that I wanted to pull this up here tonight just uh, to finish with, to start with. We always kind of have a moment of silence before we start with uh, serenity prayer. Um, but uh, he mentioned in the groups before they would use just an empty chair in the front as a reminder of people that are still out there that need to be sitting in one of these chairs. And so I thought we'd finish tonight just with before we break into groups uh, and stuff like that, just thinking about whether it's your guy's friend, uh, some that, uh, that we don't know, but some that we do, and some that are here on a pretty regular basis, and for whatever reason, maybe they're just sick tonight, or maybe, but like anytime, anytime one of you guys aren't here, there's a part of me that's going, uh-oh, <laughs> you know, uh-oh. And uh, so uh, check on people, check on people. Uh, as Doug was saying, check on people that are around you that may need a physical hand, but especially in the recovery world, if you know somebody in that world and you haven't seen them in a while, yeah, w when, when you're out there running, you go ghost, right? Mm -hmm. So somebody that you know has gone ghost on you, you know, you already know. So it's time to start making some calls and some text and some asking some questions and just let them know you can't do it for them, right? Nobody can do it for you. Nobody did it for you, but you can let them know that there's a place where, where people do care, all right? So, and then the only other announcement, he was talking about getting involved someplace where it's fun. Tomorrow night's nacho night here before worship. Just saying, just saying. Uh, nacho bar here in the lobby tomorrow night at 6 and uh, worship at 7. And Jason is preaching, not me, so Doug, it'll be good this week. Okay. And it also needs somebody to clean the carpet Friday. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's just have some. Uh, just, uh, I'll give you a few seconds silence. Put somebody you know in this chair. Pray for them, and I'll pray, and we'll break. God, you know the ones I'm worried about that I have to already text tonight. Hey, where you at? Everything okay? Uh, I know everybody in this room, some of our ones may be the same, but they could very well be 30 different people. Uh, and God, we just want to let people know that we care. Uh, and there are folks that care about them. And then ultimately to point them to the one who cares the most, to your son, Jesus Christ. In the name we pray. Amen. 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 Take a break.